For National Poetry Month, I want to share exercises to help you with the efficiency of writing lines and evoking strong imagery. For this video, let's work on imagery. A poetic voice or speaker, the narrator of the poem, serves as a tour guide of a moment or experience. The speaker shares the details to focus on. So imagine a whole poem as a painting. The speaker uses a line to say, look at this part of the painting. A speaker does this during a line using sensory language. A line will consider how we use our senses to feel and use a line to highlight a specific detail to help us feel. As an example, let's look at Emily Dickinson's Hope is the Thing with Feathers. Her poem starts with hope is a thing with feathers, which is a line that prompts us to see hope visually as a thing with feathers, like a bird that flows into the line that perches into the soul. Hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul. That being a thing with feathers or hope perching the soul. She uses the visual imagery of a bird to imagine abstract things like hope and soul. She continues and sings the tune without the words. The sensory imagery moves from the visual to sonic. Hope sings a tune without words, like a bird sings without lyrics. The poem finishes the stanza with and never stops at all. Hope sings a tune without ever stopping. Hope is an abstract idea that Dickinson fleshes out during each line in the poem by using sensory details of how a bird perches and sings. Now we imagine hope as something specific that can fly away but instead rests and sings without stopping. So that's how Dickinson uses imagery to look at abstract feelings. Let me share two exercises you can complete to work on imagery. First, draw or paint something. Before you create an image with words, create an actual image. I always say that a drawing or a painting doesn't have to be perfect. And as a writer, the process is more important. By looking at an object or scenery, then trying to recreate it using a pencil or a paintbrush and colors, you have to pay close attention to details. You have to make choices on how to create an actual color you see and you replicate nuances within something in front of you. That process will help you see in a more intense level, a level you need for writing imagery. And second, write just the facts of what you see. So by facts, I mean avoid flowery language even if you write about flowers. Before you dive into sensory details, try writing poetry or description using only the facts that you view. This doesn't mean that you write, it's a flower. You can write, sunflowers sit under a meadow surrounded by live oaks. Some description on how the poem speaker feels in this environment might spruce it up, but try writing simply to have a handle on what you see directly. To quote Japanese poet Matsuo Bashu, when composing a verse, let there not be a hair's breadth separating your mind from what you write. When playing around with imagery, play around with directness and what you visually see before playing around with how to communicate the feeling. Sometimes the reader can feel what you communicate from directness and imagery. 